Amen. Glory to God. We'd like you to turn in the book of Mark today. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. As we are coming down off of the Christmas season for 2019, we are wanting you to really focus on this transition that we're making from one year into the next year. And as we are transitioning from one year to the next year, we need to know what to put our focus on. And of course, we know to focus on Jesus Christ, and we need to understand that he takes us from one level to the next level, one level of faith to another level of faith. And there are always some things there that try to push or hinder or fight against you from growing in faith. But you have to be determined to keep on growing in faith no matter what. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So we want you to turn to Mark chapter number one, and we're going to begin reading in the King James Version, starting at verse number 14. When you got it, say amen. amen. All right, let us begin reading. Mark chapter one, beginning at verse 14, it says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James son of Zebedee, and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants, and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught, and they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Today we're going to use as a subject title, It's in you. Everybody say out loud, say, It's in you. you. Now I want you to turn to two or three people and say, It's in you. you. And you say, Well, what what in the world is it? (laughs) What in the world is it? Sometimes out in the world people say things like, "Uh, You're full of it. And we don't know what it is. (laughs) But we want you to find out what the it is that we're talking about here on today. And we'll find out what's in you. Because Jesus noticed that there must have been something in the people that he called. We see here that he opens up his ministry after he was baptized and after he had uh, began his earthly ministry. John the Baptist had been put in jail. So John the Baptist's ministry basically was over because he would be put to death when he went to jail. But Jesus now, who is increasing as John the Baptist would decrease, and Jesus is going about and he is preaching the kingdom of God. And one of the things that he would say when he would preach is he said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. That's the same thing that John the Baptist said. Repent. What is that all about? Repent meaning that you've got to make some change in your life. In order for you to walk in the purpose that God has for you, you're going to have to change from where you are to coming into where I want you to be. So repent just simply means to turn around. Turn around from your old ways and turn to serve the Lord. And so when he is trying to get them to focus on a new way of life, He goes around and he's preaching and he's teaching, but yet he's going around and he's choosing people who would serve with him to continue this message of repentance and to bring the kingdom of God into the earth. He chooses men who were not like other men. Every one of them had a unique calling on their life. Every one of them had a special way of dealing with people and the things around them. They were all people who were career men, and yet they all had some personality issues. So Jesus went around and he began to see some people. It says that he he met a man by the name of Simon, and Simon had a brother named Andrew, and they had friends who were John and and, and James, who were sons of Zebedee, these were all fishermen. 
And so they had made a career out of fishing. And so Jesus comes to these fishermen and he began to speak to them and introduce himself to them. And straightway, it says, they left what they were doing just to follow Jesus. These men left their careers. They left their background. They left whatever they had behind so that they could follow Jesus, who was really just a stranger who had come and began to preach something that was a little bit different. He sounded a little bit different from everybody else. There were other preachers. There were other others who claimed to be prophets or whatever, but John the Baptist was the prophet of the time. And so those who had followed John now would turn to follow Jesus because John said that, behold, this is the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. So they figured there must have been something special about this man called Jesus. Mark doesn't go into the detail about how Jesus had them to go out into the deep and cast out their nets and, and then begin to, to bring in many fish. But this just gives you a few of the details. And it lets you know that they had encountered Jesus and they were able to bring in many fish. And Jesus said, now, I want you to follow me and I'm going to make you fishers of men. Your life is about to change. Things are about to turn around. And I want you to learn how you can make a difference in the world. The world was in pretty bad shape back then, just like it is today. We've got all kinds of things. Political uproars are going on all the time. We've got mass shootings and killings going on all the time. We've got all of these storms and, and people are losing families and loved ones and, and there's distress and hurt all around us. And we want change in this world. But we don't realize that God has placed us here to bring about change. Oh, that doesn't mean that we're going to make all the problems go away. But it does mean that Jesus will use your life to make a difference in somebody else's life if only you learn what he can do for you. If you will follow him, he'll show you what he can do for you. Then you'll be able to show others what he can do for them. So you got to understand that there must be something in you that God would be drawn to you. You're, you're in this place today, and you're watching me today. Why? Because there's something in you that God wants to bring out. <laughs> something is in you that God wants to bring out. And so you don't know it until he begins to show it to you. Amen. Now, what do we see in this situation here? We find that Jesus is reaching out to change men who would change the world. How in the world can I change the world? Just little old me. You know, you think about where you came from. You think about your background. You think about your education. You think about the money you have and the friends you have. You think about all that you have dealt with throughout your life. And yet, God is saying, I want to use you to change the world. Well, 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 Lord, I, I, I don't have the ability to travel around the world. I don't have the ability to, to talk to people. I don't have this. And he said, I'm not looking for your ability. Amen. All I need is your availability. Amen. And if you'll make yourself available to God, he can do extraordinary things with your ordinary life. Uh, are you in the house today? Amen. So God wants to take uh, just ordinary people and do extraordinary things with you. It doesn't matter who you are. You are in this place today. You are hearing my voice today because God wants to do something great in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next, we find that they were men who were not lazy, but they were already busy. Amen. Now, they were busy doing their career. They were busy doing all that they knew. They were busy doing the things that they had been trained to do. They, had, they were busy doing the things that they had the gifts and the talents to do. And, and so they were about the business of these men were fishermen. They were about the business of fishing. And they would make a living not only for themselves, but they were also going to use these fish to help feed other families. So Jesus says, okay, I'm going to look at your career. I'm going to look at your training. I'm going to look at your background. I'm going to look at all the things that you have learned in life, and I want you to put those things together and now target my purpose. Yeah, yeah. 
take those things and target God's purpose. It's not that they will waste, but you, you use them in the world, but that's only temporary. Maybe that is going to put some food on your table. Maybe that is going to bring blessings to you. Maybe that is going to help your lifestyle. But at the same time, you are here for a bigger purpose. And your purpose is to glorify God. Amen. And if your purpose is to glorify God, now you take those talents, those abilities, those skills that you have, and now target God's purpose for you. Amen. Begin to ask God, Lord, what is your purpose for me? How can I use my singing ability? How can I use my sewing? And how can I use my typing? How can I use my uh, ability to speak? How can I use my mechanical abilities? Whatever you have, bring it to God. Amen. And he will purpose it for the kingdom of God. Amen. All you got to do is just surrender it to him. That's what he means by repent. When you repent, that means you surrender your life. You, you turn away from whatever it is that you're doing just to make you happy. Now you begin to say, now, Lord, how can I use this to make you happy? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And so then he calls upon them, men who are not lazy, but men who are already doing something. They might have not been doing good things, all of them, because some of them were thieves. Jesus called on thieves. Jesus, Jesus called on people who were tax collectors. Jesus called on all kind of outcasts. <laughs> and he would go out among the outcasts. He would go out among the lost and the forgotten. And he would say, now I'm going to make something out of you. Why don't we see him going to the Pharisees? Why don't we see him going to priests and, and, and kings and, and people of that sort? Because these people felt like they were already doing what they were supposed to do. They felt like they didn't need any teacher that comes from Galilee, walking along the seashores. They didn't, they didn't need him. They, they couldn't see God in him. They couldn't see that, that they needed to come uh, uh, any further because they had already achieved and arrived at what they wanted to do. They were, they were happy because they were rich. They were happy because they were already in, in a high status. And so they figured, well, if I've already arrived, there's nothing you can teach me. So Jesus would go among those people who already knew that they had a need. Notice that he only goes to people who recognize they got a need. Yeah. Amen. And the people who have a need, whether they're rich or poor, they recognize that they are poor in spirit, so they need God. Yeah. And when they realize they needed God, Jesus would step into their life. Jesus would step into the life of, 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 of a blind man named Bartimaeus because he had a need. Jesus would step into a, a, a tax collector's life whose name was, uh, uh, what, what, what was Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus, a little short man, climbing up in the tree because he wanted to see Jesus. He would use him. Jesus would use somebody like Mary Magdalene who had seven demons in her and he would cast out seven demons. Oh, yeah. Prostitutes. People of that sort. Yeah. The low life people. Yeah. People that the religious folks would reject. And say, well, we don't want to have anything to do with you. People that the religious people would, would not even allow them to come near them because they figured that this is the low life. Jesus hung out with them. Yeah. Jesus would eat with them. Jesus would go among them and they were the ones who would follow Jesus because they had a need in their life. Yeah. And so Jesus said, I want you to follow me because you have a need, yet I see something in you that I want to pull out of you. I want to pull out what is called potential. Everybody say potential. Everybody who recognizes that they have a need for God have potential to change the world. Oh my goodness, you didn't, you didn't catch that. If you realize that you have a need for God in your life, you have the potential to what? Change the world. And God wants to show you how to do that. That's why Jesus said to these people, follow me. They left everything they had to follow Jesus. Why? He had, he had to show them that they had great potential, even if they had a terrible personality. Amen. <laughs> Some people have a rotten personality, yet they still have potential. Amen. He wants to deal with your personality. That's where the change needs to take place. See, Amen. there is, you are who you are, 
and he made you who you are to be who you are. Amen. But he wants to improve the way that you act. Amen. He wants to improve your behavior. Yes. See, yes. see your, your behavior in itself is not salvation, but when you come to know Jesus and he saves you and gives you his spirit, then he begins to work on your personality yes. to improve who you are. Amen. You will always be who you are. Yes. He just wants to improve who you are. He got to tweak you a little bit. <laughs> he got to tweak your mind so that you will have a renewed mind in him. Begin to think like he wants you to think. You, you have to have a, a tweaking of your behavior because he just wants to turn your behavior in a way where you exemplify love and you walk in love and in the spirit of God. So he wants to do something with you, with what's already in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. So now we find that Jesus has chosen these men. I call them a ragtime team, team group of men because whenever you get a group of folks who are always bickering about who's the greatest, who are always fighting among themselves, that I can do it better than you, they, I, I got better gifts than you, I got more talents than you, then what you, what you got is the, the same kind of people that Jesus would call on. He said, yeah, y'all need some help. <laughs> You're a piece of work. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, You're just a piece of work. <laughs> uh, after Jesus began to talk to them about making them fishers of men, next thing we see is that he took them to church. He took them under his own arms that he can mentor them, to teach them. To become the kind of people he wanted them to be. I, I look at your neighbor and say, you got to go to church. Go to church. See, if you're really going to learn what God wants for you to learn, you're going to have to be in the atmosphere that is conducive for learning how to grow in God. So some people forget to go to church, or they give up on going to church, or they don't see the need for going to church because they think, well, you know, now that I know God, I, I, I can just make it on my own. But you know what? You're going to always resort right back to the flesh because, see, every time you think that you can handle your situations, every time you think you can live right on your own, you're going to mess up. Yes. Oh, yes, you will. You're going to mess up because, see, you're not hearing the voice of God. Going to church and being in the right atmosphere teaches you how to hear the voice of God. Yes. And I'm not talking about something that you hear with your ears. I'm talking about that inner prompting that you get when the Spirit of God is leading you, yes. when the Spirit of God is giving you guidance, when he is showing you what to do and how to respond and how to speak. See, he's always going to let you be motivated by love. That's how you know that the Spirit of God is operating in your life. It's whenever you operate in love. It says, no, no matter what I do, no matter how people treat me, I am going to respond with love. Amen. That's being led of the Spirit of God. Amen. And so he wants to teach you these things. But you won't know unless you get in the right atmosphere. Be in church. Be in Bible study. Be in Sunday school. Every way you can get the word of God. Turn on the Christian radio. Turn on Christian TV. Get it every kind of way you can. You can't get too much of God's word. Amen? Amen. Come on now. If indeed it's the word of God. So he took them to church to teach them how they can grow in faith. He was not a traditional preacher. A traditional preacher, meaning that there were some people who were already in positions of leadership. We mentioned the Pharisees. We mentioned the priests. We mentioned scribes. These people were already in positions of leadership, and they were already doing uh, various things that you would consider religious acts. And they figured their religious acts is all that it would take to save them. The Pharisees figured that they were so perfect that people couldn't come around them, couldn't touch them, couldn't speak to them. So they had their noses up in the air all the time because they were such knowledgeable people of the law. Right. Then you had the priest who thought that because they were of the lineage of Levi, that they had it made. Yes. And so that, that was their salvation because they came out of that particular family. Uh, there are some people in church today who figure because their daddy was a preacher or because their granddaddy was a preacher that they, uh, their life is, is, is already secure. But you have to understand you got to know the Lord for yourself. 
And then you've got the scribes who were the very intelligent people of the day who would keep records and they knew how to keep the books and they knew how to write down all of the history that was going on around them. And so they figure we have arrived. We got everything. So Jesus couldn't do anything with them. Religious people are the hardest people to deal with. Church people are the hardest people to deal with. So Jesus did not come to be a traditional preacher. He, he, didn't, he didn't preach like other preachers were preaching. He, he might not have uh, put his handkerchief to his ear and started humming and tuning and, 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 and hooping and carrying on because uh, everybody can't receive that. Uh, so he didn't come like that, glory to God. Uh, amen. It's not that there's anything wrong with a little hooping every now and then, but I just want you to understand that Jesus wanted to teach the people. He wanted them to go away learning something. Not that they just have a good feeling, but when they leave his presence, that they will go away with something in their heart, something in their mind, something that they can think about, that they'll be able to, to measure their life against the life of holiness and say, am I where I'm supposed to be? Make them want to change. Hallelujah. And so now we begin to, to see that Jesus was not the traditional preacher. How is he reaching you today? Do you realize what's in you today? Do you realize that there is potential in you today? Are you willing to change the world? How many of you are willing to change the world? If the Lord call upon you and say, I want you to change the world, as long as he'll give you the help, would you do it? Everybody say, I'm willing. You're in the right place then. If you're willing, that, then, then you're in the right place. Glory to God. And the next thing that, was on the, uh, that is very important is that are you willing to use your potential for Jesus? These men were fishermen, and so now they begin to fish out men for the kingdom of God. This is ultimately what he wants all of us to do. He wants all of us to be preachers. Did you know that? All of us. Oh, I can't preach. I can't preach. No, you might not have what it takes to get behind a pulpit and preach. But maybe you have other ways of preaching, other ways of reaching people with the gospel. Yes. Uh, maybe, maybe you'll cook. Maybe you'll make clothes. Maybe, maybe you are a, a good businessman, a good businesswoman. And, and, and whatever it is that you have, you can use that as a gift to build the kingdom of God. Oh, yes. If you're a teacher, maybe you should be uh, doing some kind of after-school tutoring. Whatever it is that God put in you. Maybe you have a gift of singing. Maybe you have a gift of poetry or, or writing or, or whatever it is. The gift is there so that you can use it for God's kingdom. Amen. But you've been trying to make a career out of it. You've been trying to get paid for everything you do. See, there are times when you just can't get paid for everything that you're able to do. There is not enough compensation in the world to pay you for what you really are worth. But God has a payment system that's beyond anything like we call money. Amen. God can pay you the satisfaction of knowing that you're in his perfect will. Amen. And when you're in God's perfect will, he'll be able to say to you, good and faithful servant, well done. Yeah. When you have finished the course, when you have kept the faith, yeah. when you have done what you were supposed to do, and you have walked in righteousness, then at the end of it all, he's going to give you a payment of eternal life, and you can't get that anywhere else in the world with God. His compensation is better. We walking up in there talking about where, well, you know, I'll, I'll serve in the church. How much y'all gonna pay me? All right now. Somebody, not, so, not too long ago, somebody wanted to be a musician at the church and, and wanted to know, well, how much y'all gonna pay me? I said, it's not about that at all, sir. You got to go through proper protocol, but also the most important thing is you must be born again. Amen. And if you're born again and you're willing to serve, then do it voluntarily because all of us are volunteers. Amen. And if there come a time where you can be compensated, well, that's great. That's, that's great. But right now, we're not looking for that. We're looking for people who know they have a need in their life. And so when the gospel comes to you and the Lord begins to work in your life, that's all that's needed is people who come humbly and say, I need the Lord, and we will offer the word of God to you, and then God himself will begin to position you where you're supposed to be. Don't worry about titles. Don't worry about getting paid. Just think about, I want to do what God called me to do. And it's coming from inside. 
coming from the heart, not from outside, not just because somebody asked you to do it. It may start with somebody asking you if you can do this and if you won't mind doing that or helping out with this or that. That's all right. But when it comes out of your heart because you are willing to do it, Amen. then you know that you are doing and using your potential for the kingdom of God. Amen. Then God begins to give you a peace and a satisfaction that you are in the right place at the right Amen. time. Well, all I can do is sweep the floor. That's good. That's a ministry. All I can do is wash the dishes. That's good, because that's a ministry. Yes. All I can do is count money. That's good. That's a ministry. Amen. All I can do is mow the grass. That's good. That's a ministry. Amen. You got to understand that every form of ministry is important. I can play an instrument. Good. That's ministry. I can sing. Good. That's ministry. Ministry. What is ministry? Ministry is serving people. Ministry is whenever you can help somebody and strengthen somebody and build somebody else up. See, what you've been doing all your life is you've been trying to make yourself happy. You've been so much in the pursuit of happiness that you're sad. Because every time that you pursue happiness outside of Jesus Christ, you're going to find yourself unhappy. You're going to find yourself unsatisfied. Gratify it for a temporary period of time, but right, then after a while, you're going to still find yourself unsatisfied. There is no satisfaction except in Christ because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. And he'll begin to show you how to use your gifts and your talents and your abilities for his kingdom. Somebody out there needs your help. Yes. Somebody out there needs you to encourage them. Yes. Somebody out there needs you to just hold their hand. With all the distresses that's going on in the world right now, the saints of God and the sons of God are needed to be manifested. To go yes. out among them and hold Amen. somebody's hand. Yes. To put your arm around somebody. Yes. To love on somebody. Yes. And let them know there is some hope. Amen. Jesus is using you when you do that. You don't have to preach in the pulpit. Don't be, don't be scared of this thing because that's not where he's calling everybody. Amen. But your pulpit can be on the place, in the place where you work in this place where you go to school. Your pulpit may be on a playground somewhere. Your pulpit can be on the bus when you're riding back and forth. Your pulpit might be at that restaurant that you eat at and that waitress or waiter comes to wait on you. And there might be something you can say to encourage them. They need your encouragement. They need you to be right where you are. You don't have to worry about trying to get behind a podium. But get out there among the people. And then, I the church, just like Jesus did. <laughs> Jesus let them know that God has got potential in you, and he just wants to pull it out of you.